Hello. So today I'm going to try and pound two water bottles. So here we go. Okay, now that's out of the way. Let's get down to brass tacks. You gotta look at the camera, it's right here. So, today I want to talk about how the US, United States, is not actually a democracy, it's more of an oligarchic plutocracy. What's an oligarchic plutocracy, you ask? I'm glad you asked. So, oligarchy is when the government is run by a group of people, just like one group, a handful, and they make the decisions for the rest of the members of the, the citizens of the government, so to speak. And a plutocracy is a government that is run by specifically the wealthy class. So, oligarchic plutocracy, that is... A government that is run by a handful of extremely wealthy people. And to show that, I am going to talk about this study that Princeton and Northwestern did. And basically, this study was about if the United States is an oligarchy. And I'm not going to get too into the details of the study, but I will provide a link to it so you can check it out. It's a really cool thing. But the main thing about the study is this quote, and it's kind of like these, it's like an outline of what an oligarchy is, so I'm going to explain that. But essentially the study was an analysis of 1,700 policy outcomes, and who did better favor. Surprise, it, they found out it was an oligarchy in the end. But let's get to this quote. So essentially, um, they said this. It is well established that organized groups regularly lobby and fraternize with public officials. They move through revolving doors between public and private employment. They provide self-serving information to officials. They draft legislation and spend a great deal of money on elections and campaigns. So now I'm going to break this down point by point and I'm going to use real actual examples of how the United States is. And the funny thing enough is this can all be explained through oil and gas and the oil and gas lobby, the whole thing with each of these points. It's, it's amazing. So to start off, number one, politicians and lobbyists move through revolving doors between public and private sector work. So an example of this would be Rex Tillerson. He was chairman and CEO of ExxonMobil, which is, you know, one of the biggest oil and energy production companies on the planet and he went from CEO of the biggest oil company on the planet to one of the biggest public officials on the entire planet the position of secretary of state he was the 69th secretary of state of the United States and it's not as nice as it should be so the second point they give self-serving information to officials now this is a uh, part of a study and it's also a part of this website called Exxon New and what Exxon New is they break down chronologically Exxon hiding the fact that they knew that um, fossil fuels and stuff cause uh, carbon emissions to increase and probably cause climate change. So uh, in this they showed an investigation by Columbia University and the LA Times and it showed evidence that Exxon and the rest of the oil industry knew about the man-made carbon emissions back in the 70s. So in 1998, there was the API Global Climate Science Communications Plan. And basically, this was developed by ExxonMobil and these communications professionals that they hired. Oh, God, sorry, this water is 
way too hydrating. It was a multi-million dollar, multi-year um, budget to install uncertainty in the public arena. So this targeted science teachers and policy makers and just, you know, news people in general. And like the science teacher things really get me. Like they're sending this misinformation to science teachers so then they can teach kids that oil and gas is not a problem. So then these kids are going, they're raised being indoctrinated, already thinking that oil and gas production is fine. It doesn't harm the environment in any way. So the next point, a lot of money is spent on elections. So this comes from Open Secrets. And Open Secrets is this online website that tracks and publishes all finances that happen in the political arena. So any kind of donation, any money spent lobbying, anything like that is on Open Secrets. And then so specifically, I'm going to use an example of the 2018 election cycle. And so the oil and gas companies, their donations to Congress during this election cycle totaled about $28 million. Now, the top two recipients of this, number one, Ted Cruz of Texas. Not so surprising, he's a Republican senator, you know, obviously he's gonna take this. But the second most highest recipient, this one really surprised me. It was Beto O'Rourke of El Paso, Texas. So, I, I mean, he's supposed to be the progressive darling and he was like the superstar of that election. Everyone, you know, had their bumper stickers and all this, and he was pro all these great social things. And then I heard about, like, the oil and gas donations, but I didn't know he was the second most. So Ted Cruz took in $600,000 from the oil and gas companies. Beto O'Rourke took in 500000 literally a 100000 difference. I, I just, it's so astounding that someone could label themselves as a progressive, and that's what happens. So, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Both sides in our government are pretty locked and loaded with money. And so these were my direct examples of why it's an oligarchy or oligarchic plutocracy. And I mean, it's pretty fucked. You can do with what you want with the information, but it's a little scary. So I'm going to leave links in the description below with all the sources. You can check out all the websites, find out what you think, and please leave a comment and let me know what I can do better. I should probably get better at writing scripts for this thing. But thank you very much. Stay hydrated. Okay, bye.